We've looked at a lot of old computers on this channel, but now we have to step even further back in the past to take a look at the Hitachi MB6880. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Now we use PCBWay quite a lot to well, create PCBs, but did you know you don't have to stick with your box standard green PCBs? You can have a vast array of different options, different color board, different materials for the board if you want that extra special PCB made up, and different colors for silk screen to make it look a little bit different. As well as a great service on PCBs, they also handle 3D printing, injection molding, and sheet metal work. Go to PCBWay for all of your product construction needs. And thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. And here it is. The the rather wonderful MB6880. It was released initially in 1978, and it was one of the very first pre-built computers on, in the Japanese market, or at least one of the first pre-built ones that was created in the Japanese market. Uh, up to that point, it was mostly comprised of imported machines and kit computers like NEC's TK80. It's powered also by Motorola's first commercial processor, the 6800, which runs at a startling 750 kilohertz. Yeah, that's kilohertz, not megahertz. The initial machine came with 4K and what they eventually referred to as Level 1 Basic uh, as its user operating system, much like a lot of the 8-bit machines you're probably used to, which would uh, boot into Basic. There's no graphic modes as such, just the standard 253 character set, but did include some graphical characters and it's monochrome, there's no color. Now, uh, the odd thing is, so this is, uh, you can see from the label there, oh, I guess I should talk about, <laughs> talk about the elephant in the room here. Yeah, yeah, this has got some, um, this is weathered, let's say. It was quite plainly well loved, although it seems to have, uh, have had some stuff happen to it. Like this, um, it'd be easy to kind of assume that this is the, uh, caused by someone's wrists but there's it's not quite in the right position really if you were using it if you look at that kind of it it's not quite in the right position if you were using this uh computer um so yeah i'm guessing this is somehow how it's stored and there's a giant scratch here as well uh i'm trying to color match this color because obviously i don't want to lose this uh this wonderful text up here which is still perfect um, a little bit of a scratch there, but it's fine. Um, but the worst case scenario, I, I've got some transfers made up of this text, which I've reproduced as close as possible. So um, we will, if necessary, respray the whole thing and and just replace those. I'm trying not to do that though. Um, yeah, and on the front here, we see the keyboard, which is not bad, it's not a bad keyboard um, at all. It's a little spongy maybe, but there's some good travel. It's missing quite a few vital keys. There's no escape button for a start. Uh, and though it has got English, uh, mostly uh, well, Latin uh, character set on it, it um, does have uh, the Japanese text as well. Um, so yeah, it's... <laughs> It's a a very early machine, so it's quite interesting. So yeah, got power light here. Got this nice big oh, chunky on-off button. Chunky on-off buttons. Uh, it is also I, I probably didn't fully explain. Mostly met metal construction. So this is metal. These are plastic here, uh, which hold it together. But the base is also metal with some plastic bits. The power supply as well. It's got an external power supply. Is a giant brick and is also metal and uh, color matched the same thing, which is rather pleasant. Um, and it does kind of fit the contours as well. You can't quite see it, it's over that side. So uh, if we take a little look ooh, on the back, hopefully we'll be able to get some of this fitting in. Uh, so we've got this little expansion bay here, which pops off like that. Uh, this is a little bit broken, unfortunately, so it doesn't quite go on properly, but it goes on well enough. Just kind of hinges on. That's made of metal as well, by the way, the <laughs> little expansion cover. Uh, so we have a cassette port. I uh, could use 300 board cassette tapes to load uh, programs from. I don't have any programs for this, by the way, so we'll have a look at it running, but um, won't be able to see any stuff other than what we type in going. Uh, this is the power connector. So this has a nice chunky DIN connector for power. Uh, this sets the volume. It's got a kind of an inbuilt speaker, but it's also got external sound as well. So which is 
handled here. So this one where someone's state stencil what looks like a bee in there. I don't know. Uh, it could be a, a Japanese character, I'm not sure. But yeah, that's the audio and that's a video output as well. And then we have RF with a channel selector switch, of course. And that is basically, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's there's not much to this at all. Again, it's very, very early. Um, so I think what we'll do is we will actually uh, open this up. Not so much because of the insides. The insides, um, they're not going to be startling. It's, again, a very early machine. So uh, there's, whilst well, it's very cool, <laughs> it's not going to have a lot of the kind of the, the, the clever bits of silicon and stuff that late machines had because they just didn't exist at this point. Um, but the construction itself is is very, very... Uh, is very cool. Uh, reminiscent actually of the much, much, much later Memotech MTX range. Uh, that's what it reminds me of. Um, so let's take it apart. So let's move the power supply out of the way. Because, uh, yeah, the power supply, by the way. Oh, the, the weight, I guess, is the thing. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. So because this is, this, there's literally so much metal in this construction, whilst it is obviously vastly smaller than the Tatum Einstein, because pretty much everything is vastly smaller than the Tatum Einstein. Uh, it weighs almost the same, <laughs> just because it's so dense. <laughs> it's incredible. Right, let's get a screwdriver and we will start taking this apart. Okay, so it's kind of easy to get this thing out. If we kind of, uh, I don't think we have enough light really, but there's two screws on each side. Very nice, long, machined screws. This was well put together. And then once those screws are out, these bits just pull off like that. Same on this side. Once those are off, there's one more screw at the back, which I'll just get here. Oh, almost lost it. <laughs> and then once that's done, this, take that one off, got to take that off. Uh, this will then just kind of pivot forward and then it's latched at the front so we can push it forward like that and then it, we can take it to one side. So yeah, here's our main board. Now I was saying I think this one's a bit weird because uh, on the front we can see here it just says MB6880. Now there were several variants of this machine. Um, uh, with improvements in what they did. There are lots of these level one and two machines though. And these are kind of, this is the important thing. So a level one machine had level one basic 4K memory. Now this one, when I powered it up, says it's level two basic. Now normally those have a little kind of, I think it's L2 at the end there to say it's, it's level two. But this one of course doesn't. So I don't know if it's maybe just lost the L2 or if it's an upgraded uh, L1, which is possible. It's got this little daughter board here so maybe it's been upgraded to have that basic uh all the memory here is socketed but that looks like it's from factory because all of these sockets are exactly the same uh there we go the uh, hd46800 or the motorola 6800 so that's the cpu we've got some nec stuff there that looks like some kind of decoding logic i think um And that looks like a BIOS. Actually, that looks like a, that might be a BIOS as well. Anyway, we can look at these later. <laughs> and I'll, if I remember, I'll put them up on screen. Uh, some, a few voltage regulators here. Unsurprising. Now, the way this is constructed, uh, now I think um, moving this across here. Oh, hello. This is. Uh, 
this is precarious. Uh, for my uh, for these these videos, I use a uh, a sideboard that's propped on a trestle table, so it's not the most stable of of, of work environments, uh, I will say. But it does give me flexibility in this room, which is full of stuff. But here we go. There we go. We can see it. So here we go. Now, the unfortunate thing is, I was really hoping that when I first opened this, that all the stuff was going to be connected onto this part. And then so we just take the lid off. But no, a lot of the stuff is connected up here, including this rather wonderful thing. So this here's the internal speaker, which is on a wooden frame, which is just basically twist, metal twisted to hold it in place, which I kind of think is rather wonderful. <laughs> Uh, and there's the keyboard. The keyboard you can disconnect. It's got all of these edge connectors here. You can just pull those out, which is good. It looks like a nice quality piece of work as well. And the power switch and light are on the top there as, as two. So yeah, I, it's a fascinating piece of construction. And uh, to get it back together again, you can just pull it in at the front, make sure it's lined up, and then it will just slide in. There we go. It's all slid in. And then you just put the... Uh, plastic brackets back on and uh, you're back in business. Amazing. I just, it's, it's a genuinely lovely piece of uh, construction, just a really pleasing way of putting this computer together. Right. What I'll do is I will put this back together and then we'll just turn it on just so we can see the screen and then we'll go off to a summary. So I will see you in a bit. There we go. <laughs> basic Master Level 2 version 1.0. So yeah, it's a it's a basic machine, so we can type in 10. This is genuinely actually this keyboard. I like it more. Okay, oh, hold on. Okay, well, I found the lead at least. There we go. There's there we are. And yeah, obviously it's a it's a standard, about say basic inflation of basic, uh, standard version of basic, so it is in English. And uh, return, there we go. 20, go to 10, and then we can type run. There we go, the old favorite. <laughs> and we have a break key there, so we can. There we are. Uh, yeah, the keyboard still works really, really well, uh, which is, you know, pretty astounding given its age. <laughs> Um, it's a fantastic little machine. Uh, again, that's pretty much all I can show you because <laughs> there really isn't. Um, we can somehow one of these one of these con controls. There we go. There are. We can bring up the Japanese characters by holding down a key. And yeah. Again, not a lot we can show because there's no software that we have for it. Maybe we'll get some eventually. Uh, so anyway, that's it. That's, that's the MB6880. Uh, let's go to a summary. So there we have it. The rather wonderful Hitachi MB6880. Uh, it was pretty popular when it first came out, obviously being one of the first of its kind, but it started to lose traction over time as other players entered the market like NEC and Sharp, but they released later versions of it and the, the level three ones had high resolution graphics and were able to use the full Japanese character set as well. So that helped it to improve in popularity, but eventually Hitachi did lose out in the market, although they did continue to release some fairly wonderful machines, including some MSX machines, which we have shown off before. Um, it's a beautiful machine. <laughs> I've got a lot of work to do on it, obviously. I've got to replace that uh, paintwork that's missing. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that yet because the paint is quite high quality paint by the looks of it. Um, and it was obviously, um, it obviously been, uh, got had a zinc undercoat as well to protect it. So I've got to work out how to do that. So yeah, it's going to take a while to work that one out, but we will get it done. Uh, eventually, I imagine I will probably end up uh, donating this one to the uh, Center for Computing History because it's just a gorgeous machine that people should be able to play with and look at. Yeah. <laughs> right. If you like the video, please hit like. If you really like the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't like the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to hit the bell icon down here somewhere, uh, which will tell you about future videos. Right. See you next time. The future looks bleak Remember our childhood To get us through the week
Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused 